Hey everyone, this is Sira Sela. Welcome to the Elpa podcast. Elpa is an association of players in your league, which aims to collectively represent players and help their careers. We will be bringing you conversations with current and former EuroLeague players and other personalities from the world of basketball. Our guests will talk about their journeys, on and off the court stories, and look deeper into what it means to be a vital part of the basketball industry. I think the biggest uh, proof for that is when I discuss uh, Elpa with, uh, with former players. Yeah. who every single one from EuroLeague legends to the guys that maybe played only one year, league in, one year in EuroLeague they all tell me that they wish they had something yeah. like Elpa and this is the biggest proof for me that we are doing something that older players understand better than younger players of mm -hmm. course uh, but as the time goes on uh, it's our focus also to educate younger players uh, about the need to be a, uh, to have a strong association that, that helps the, the helps their careers. In this new episode of Elba Podcast, my guest is Bostian Narbar, known as Buki Narbar. Former NBA and EuroLeague player, Buki is now the managing director of Elba. He's the one who started the whole thing since day one. With Buki, we talked about how he ended up at this position, creating the EuroLeague Players Association after his great career. He gave us a tour of recent improvements and explained the process of negotiation with the EuroLeague. Oh, hi, Boki. You used to play basketball at the highest level. You played in your league and also in the NBA. Can you, can you tell us more about your journey? Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, sure. Um, you know, started in Slovenia. Um, you know, was was coming from a small town, but I had a lot of support from my from from my family and uh, uh, was was lucky enough to quickly move to some bigger teams. Um, you know, once I turned. At 19, uh, I started playing for Italian team uh, Benetton Treviso, which was one of the biggest European teams in that time. Um, you know, worked with Maurizio Gherardini and, and Mike D'Antoni uh, as a coach, and then uh, you know got drafted. Spent six years in the NBA uh, with the Rockets, Hornets, and the Nets, which was an amazing experience and a dream come true for me. And then returned back to Europe and uh, uh, played many more years in Euroleague. So. I'm um, very happy with my career and had a chance to live in some amazing cities. Yeah. Uh, played with and against some, some incredible uh, players, including Hall of Famers. Uh, but most importantly, made a lot of friends in different countries, which is, I would think, the most valuable thing at the end. Mm -hmm. And now you're in charge of the EuroLeague Players Association. How did you end up at this position? Um, it was uh, very spontaneous and, and unexpected. Even though as a player, I always felt that this is something that needs to needs to happen and needs to get established in Europe. Um, you know, I, I got in touch with EuroLeague uh, shortly after my playing career, and we started discussing uh, the need for the for the association. Um, you know, I started traveling uh, my first year by myself around Europe mm -hmm. and talking to players, which was a little bit awkward for me to go into locker rooms of, of so many of my opponents <laughs> from my time as a player, but really discussing some of the issues that the players are facing and collecting ideas. And uh, one thing was obvious that the motivation to have an association was very high from the players, mm -hmm. but the knowledge on, on how to do this was not there. So it was really up to to me and my team to to get those answers and uh yeah. i feel very privileged and uh you know i feel big uh responsibility to be appointed as a managing director so when you were playing do you think that an association could have changed things for you without without any question i'm sure that uh my generation or or the little bit older generation of players could could have some of those, and I'm not proud to say this, but some of those horror stories that, that happened to us, whether it was mm -hmm. the way players are treated, uh, the way players would get fined for some nonsense, the way, um, you know, would, we, would, we would get um, treated with certain injuries and recovering from injuries yeah. and so on and so on. So um, myself and many, many others always felt that the players need to step up to, to raise those standards for themselves, and this is what we're trying to do. Um, obviously, from a standpoint that we believe that if those standards get raised, not just the players would benefit, mm. and the whole European basketball would benefit, you know, including the fans and uh, and the clubs and uh, everybody involved. Yeah. So, like you said two years ago, you started traveling to meet teams. What were you discussing with them, with the players? 
Um, the the list of topics was was uh, was very long. Um, mostly it was it was most important thing was how to establish something that would have an impact on such a strong league as Euroleague. Um, and this was something where we obviously needed to rely on 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 you know st- people that know more than us, and mostly lawyers mm-hmm. and people who are dealing with with those things, yeah. and that that helped us. Uh, but then we we started discussing some of the most more. Uh, uh, things that happen, let's say, on and off the court for a basketball player. You know how to deal with with late payments and how to deal with certain injuries and and uh, you know how to uh, you know impact the league that to to adjust the the schedule or the practice times and all this stuff because mm-hmm. previously there were simple no rules, you know, for the players and the players uh, uh, you know signed the contract and basically had. Um, you know, no say in, in how yeah. they were treated on and off the court. So uh, this is where we started and this is where we are changing things step by step. And how did the players react to this all new thing? Did they embrace it? Um, many, I would say the majority of the players did. There there were some players that were um, skeptic at the beginning. Not that they didn't want an association like this, but they didn't know if and how the players could uh, get strong enough to have a voice to, mm-hmm. to start changing things. Um, and I'm proud to say that we have, we have luckily changed a lot of those play, players' opinions yeah. because we did that. So um, it's not always a pleasant conversation, um, but it's, it's, I try to be as honest uh, as possible and give players facts that, that I know, that, that I believe in, and then always players decide which direction they want to go into. And what about the clubs? How did they... How did they see you? Um, depending, we have some uh, clubs and some management of those clubs that are understandable, and uh, and uh, they they know that we are trying to not just help players, but trying to help the product as a whole, mm-hmm. uh, as well. And there are some others who are uh, probably not too happy that we are existing yeah. because they see us as threat. They see us as somebody that is trying to to change some things that they don't necessarily agree with. Um, but you know, I believe that Elpa is here and is here to stay. And uh, uh, the sooner we start cooperating, the better. And do you feel that Elpa was something very needed? I I do believe so. I think the biggest uh, proof for that is when I discuss uh, Elpa with uh, with former players, yeah. who every single one, <laughs> from Euroleague legends to the guys that maybe played only one year league in one year in Euroleague, they all tell me that they wish they had something yeah. like Elpa. And this is the biggest proof for me that we are doing something that older players understand better than younger players, of mm-hmm. course. Uh, but as the time goes on, uh, it's our focus also to educate younger players uh, about the need to be a, uh, to have a strong association that, that helps the, the helps their careers. Mm. And what's easier for you this year as you're entering your second year? Well, this year is much much easier because last year it was it was a uh, I would say a testing period for for Elpa. If we didn't succeed last year and didn't didn't get some of those you know improvements uh, that I can mention uh, later on in, into into Euroleague bylaws uh, because this was kind of a proof that Elpa works. If we didn't get that, it would be very possible that Elpa would not make the second step of getting completely established and being being here long term. Um, you know, we were, let's say, stubborn enough and we had the leadership from, from some of the amazing players and personalities yeah. that, that helped us along the way that we were able to do that. Uh, but, it, but it hasn't been easy uh, last year. But this year, it's, it's, it's a different picture. You know, the players are, are joining in, in in huge numbers. And uh, for us, this is, this is very important. And also, it makes us very happy because it, it, it really is obvious that all the work we've done last year and all the travel and all the meetings and, and all the tough negotiations that they were not for nothing. Yes. Yeah. And there's a lot of new players this year in your league. And there's also two new teams, which are, uh, which are Alba and Azel. How did it go with them? Uh, Zenit also. Uh, I should Zenith. I should put into the question. Yeah, I mean, uh, Alba was 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 a part of of, of your league before, and as well, I believe also in the in the past. So uh, those but those things are returning now to those teams are returning now to your league. But for them, it's the first time to be a part of Elpa. So it's up to us to 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 present ourselves to those players to to show them the reason why it's important to have this association. Mm-hmm. But most importantly, to make them feel at home when it comes to association, to make them feel as a part of this big group and big family. This is something yeah. I believe in that the players need to start communicating better when they see each other at games and at practices and um, you know before after practice, before the game. Yeah. 
Um, there was there has always been some kind of a disconnect from a player from that plays in Russia and the player that, for example, plays in in Spain or Italy. And, and players need to start connecting more. Yeah. And I can I can I can say that I've seen I'm seeing this shift now uh in the last year or last two years because the players are becoming like a one big family and yeah. we are talking here about the elite players in europe and and they should have a special treatment so you had major improvements in only one year which one has the biggest impact on the players do you think uh you know it depends from player to player or from team to team uh personally i think that uh having more strict rules for for the late for late payments is 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 a big one uh we're able to establish a system that puts a lot of pressure on the club if they don't uh, respect those those uh, dates that they have to pay the players mm -hmm. um, that that is a big one um, you know removing the on-court stickers with inside the three-point line was a very important step for for the players and this was some something that was not easy to achieve yeah. because it's a money issue as you can imagine we're talking about sponsors that are trying to uh, work with the clubs to have those stickers put on the court from game to game you know having it changed and and we disallowed that um you know, second medical opinion is a very important one. Um, from now on, Euroleague uh, players uh, have uh, single rooms, which is which is something that that never happened in the past, and uh, this allows a more rest. You know, stricter travel rules. Uh, the li the list is long, but I think that every everything that we negotiated and we we put into Euroleague bylaws as an improvement is something that that players can benefit. In some mm -hmm. teams, from all the changes, in some teams, you know, a few okay. because they had some before, but. The most important thing is that we are raising <clears throat> raising those standards and that uh, my goal is that the, whenever a player plays in one team, whether it's in Spain or Turkey or whatever, and then change teams, that the same standards apply. Mm. So the, the teams or the, so the players don't get uh, through this shocking period of being a new country, a new team, because the club operates differently. Yeah. It's my goal to have all the clubs operate the same way. So as you said, all the improvements are money related. Which one was the hardest to get from the Euro League and the team? I mean, you know, removing this, the 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 encore stickers was not an easy one, yeah. um, as you can as you can imagine. But for example, even single rooms were something that pushed teams pushed back, and uh, uh, this was something that not necessarily all agree with. You know, we had our reasons why it's important for players to get single rooms, but uh, this was something that uh, it's important for players. Uh, I always said that um, you know, if coaches. If, if, if head coaches as a professionals and adults can get a single room, the players should get it as well. Mm -hmm. This is my standpoint. Um, but all, all these issues, all these improvements that we made have, have, been, uh, have been negotiated uh, in, in mind that they're not just benefiting the players because we believe that they're also going to put the better product on the court at the end of the day. Yeah. If the players are going to be happy, healthy, rested, motivated, I think the league and the clubs will benefit. Mm -hmm. So you played in the NBA, where the NBPA, which is the, the association of the NBA, has a huge impact on the league. Have you cooperated with them as a player? I have. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the interesting thing was that when I entered the NBA, I didn't differentiate from NBA to NBPA. I didn't know the meaning of NBPA. Um, as the years went on, uh, I understood the, the importance of the, of the player association in the NBA and started cooperating them with them and, and kept in a really good relation with them even after I left the NBA and spent I believe 10 more years in Europe I kind of mm -hmm. kept in touch with them so I, I could not be happier with with how they have uh, supported us especially last year with with uh, you know establishing Elpa and uh, all the legal and organizational advice we got from them yeah. uh, Michelle Roberts has been incredible uh, and her staff they've been with so the so helpful yes the she's the executive director yes uh, and 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 you know their support means everything to us. Um, you know they they have this great leadership from from top players from Chris Paul and in the past LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony and those guys really have elevated the MBPA in the, in the recent years. And this was my goal here also in the in the in the year in the you know in your league or you know, your league player association to have those guys as leaders. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I could I could not be more proud of of Gigi and Kyle and Toko and all those guys that have. Uh, they have done, you know, this. Basically, they they're they're pushing us to uh, to make player association as 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 good as possible yeah. as for for the present and for the future. And uh, those guys are true leaders inside the locker room and outside. And, and like I said, I could not be more proud of those guys. So about the negotiations, how is it working with the Euroleague? 
Um, there's good days and there's bad days <laughs> because uh, there's some things that that uh, we both we have you know we both agree on and we we yeah. know it's necessary to change or to add and, and and it's easy. But there's obviously some sometimes that that I would call them minor clashes or disagreements. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know that that we don't necessarily agree see eye to eye and uh, um, as a player I never knew how this closed yeah. door meeting goes now I know it's it's not always pleasant <laughs> um, even though we try to uh, you know have this let's say a, a friendly atmosphere and, and, and be uh, on the same page as much as we can but we don't expect it always to be a smooth ride um, at the end of the day we we do expect that there will be will be clashes but as I, as I mentioned a couple of times before it's about having the best possible product mm. uh, they worry about the league and the competition and the and the interest of fans and all this and, and from our side we worry that within all this craziness the players also get what they deserve mm. so I believe that you know if we keep on working together with the same goal in mind we'll be able to achieve a lot of more things and to help your league basketball and European basketball to achieve in even higher levels. So we all agree that your league is the second best league in uh, in the world of basketball. How do you see the future of your league? Well, if if you look at the the players that signed in your league only this summer and yeah. and the, the the players that have changed teams, which made the league even more competitive, uh, which was which is great, I believe. Um, with the addition with you know two more teams from 16 to 18 and we'll see what how many if any um and how quickly they they join in the future uh the league is is growing uh immensely and it's uh, becoming uh tough you know it's been always been tough but it's becoming um not just tough but also extremely extremely talented mm -hmm. and from team to team there are some players that could easily get an opportunity also to play in the nba yeah. which we see every year and in, in, in addition to that, uh, you have more and more also players from NBA coming to your yeah. league. So, yeah. um, you know, I could not be more excited about the, this season because I think it's going to be, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best, your league season so far. Because we have so many teams that are going to not just try to make it to the playoff, but make it to the final four and, and possibly mm. win. So, if you ask me today who's the favorite to win, I have no <laughs> idea. In, in, in you know, games. yeah, I mean, you know, in previous years, maybe you could kind of pin, pinpoint yeah. two or three teams. This year, I have no idea. And uh, it, it's, it's very possible there's going to be somebody that maybe we don't even think about as a top four or five team mm -hmm. because the, the talent is so spread out around the league, which is, which is, which is great. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks to Boki for this great conversation and see you in two weeks with a new episode of Elba Podcast. <laughs>